Hey guys, in this video, as promised, I'm back with the actual auto layout detailed video on the updates that we, we basically have. Okay, so just generally, let's talk about some of the updates that we have. I'm gonna convert this into an auto layout and I'm gonna place a shape inside. I'm just gonna go ahead and resize it so we can see what's happening. So now, as you can see, this is the new auto layout panel. Um, it's obviously a bit improved, um, yet obviously it has deteriorated to a certain extent in my opinion. Uh, what's good is now you don't have to go to a menu to actually go ahead and do this alignment. So that's, I think, better. The other thing, obviously, you can just go ahead and scrub your fields like this, for example, uh, figure out what the padding should be. And let me just go ahead and actually make it fill container here. And now, as you can see, you can actually tweak the padding here. If you press shift, the padding is going to increase based on an eight pixel uh, increment or the nudge increment that you have usually people by default have the 10 pixel nudge increment you can go and press command p and search for nudge amount and you can see what the small nudge and the big nudge is going to be to actually modify it um, one important thing to note is you can go ahead and actually scrub fields from here as well if, if you just let's say click on it or as you can see you can handle one-sided padding in an actual auto layout if you press shift as you can see it's going to again fall into the eight pixel increments that I have for my nudge amount. So 0, 8, 16, 24, 32, so on and so forth. If you wanna handle it on both sides, you can press Alt or Option uh, and the padding is gonna go ahead and apply on both sides. If you press Shift, the padding, or Option and Shift, the padding is gonna apply on all sides. So the only problem with this whole all side padding idea is that if you basically have option and shift pressed, that increment thing, the eight pixel increment thing is not gonna work. So Figma probably has to think about what to do there. But even if, the, if you don't do that, that's fine. I'll, I, however, would not necessarily recommend you modifying the pixels like that. Obviously you can go ahead and do it on a one-sided thing. But one important thing that you can also do is if you wanna, let's say, give a certain amount to the pixels, you can just press option and then click. And as you can see, you can just give it here. I can say the top padding and uh, the top and bottom padding can just be 50. And if I do that, the top and bottom padding is 50. I can do the same thing here and I can say, okay, the left uh, and right padding should be 48. So it's really easy. You can just press, uh, click on it to actually just uh, tweak the padding or tweak the number um, for a single padding. If you press option, you can tweak the padding on all of the edges. If you press option and shift, you can uh, tweak the padding on all of the sides. So again, just to reiterate, click is a single side padding, option click is double side, option and shift click is all sides. So you can go ahead and do that. One other thing, some people may wanna go ahead and modify these headings here. Also one important thing, if you hover over it, as you can see, the highlight is actually there to demonstrate what the padding is and what particular type of padding are you looking at. So it's much easier to look at it without necessarily just always looking left and right. Similarly, we have the spacing in between items. Let me just go ahead and actually duplicate this box. So as you can see, this is the spacing in between items. I can go ahead and tweak it. Uh, if I am actually uh, moving it upwards, the padding is being reduced. There's a negative padding. If I'm moving it downwards, then there's a positive padding. And I can do the same shift thing to actually increase it based on the nudge amount that I have set. So that's done. Then obviously you have the uh, direction here as well. So you can tweak the direction. Uh, if you want to go ahead and actually apply the padding on all sides individually using by going on the panel on the right, you can do so. But I wouldn't re really recommend it now that you actually have all of these shortcuts. You don't have to. Ideally, you should not have to go on the right to actually do all of these things. You can stay in the middle while you're designing and actually keep on doing these things. And that's what I would recommend. One huge thing that Figma actually uh removed from the right panel was the constraint box previously it was really easy to just let's say fill give items the fill container or hug content by just clicking the arrows that were there in the resizing panel and i'm going to just share a screenshot on the screen to mention what i'm talking about so now that's not there if you want to go ahead and actually resize certain elements so if you want to do it like a fill container you can do something like this and if you similarly here fill container fixed width so on and so forth if you have some text, let's say here, I'm just gonna create a frame, uh, or let's say just go ahead and actually create a button. So I'm just gonna give this a blue background so we can consider this as a button. Obviously this does not look blue, but I think you guys get the idea. So let's just go ahead and give this a padding. So I'm just gonna give this a 
an all around padding. If you want to give an all round padding, you can just press command and click here and you can just apply the padding here as well. Obviously, I don't want that much padding on the top and the bottom. So I'm just going to say the top and the bottom should be eight. And let's just give this a border radius. <clears throat> so here we have the button. If I now want to go ahead and fill container, I can just go ahead and actually uh, make the fill container here. I can obviously position it centered. I can resize it. Uh, one shortcut that people may not necessarily know to still apply the fill container hug content and fixed width or height uh, by actually going to the frames as well or actually going to your design as well is if you press option and you double click it this is going to be fill container if you double click it again without pressing option that's going to be hug content so again if i want to do the same for the height i'm going to press option double click it on the uh, vertical points and that's going to again uh, fill container it's height if i just double click it without pressing option it's going to hug content and then obviously if i want to have a fixed width or fixed height i can just resize it normally i'm just going to make it <coughs> fill container like this so as you can see here we have the button uh, some other things that you can probably have a look at let me just go ahead and resize it now imagine you have another button and let's just go ahead and actually create an auto layout on the side and let's just increase the height of this button one other thing that Figma has actually introduced is the idea. I'm just gonna go here. Obviously you have the spec um, spacing in between and all of that stuff. Um, but I'm particularly talking about um, this text baseline, this particular option, text baseline alignment. Now, as you can see, it's much easier to actually go ahead and align items based on the text that they have. So I'm just gonna go ahead and increase this text to 32. As you can see, it's still aligned. Even if I, let's say, have uneven paddings at the bottom, I'm just gonna give an uneven padding here, 32 pixel. Uh, so something like this obviously previously would not was not possible. I can, as you can see now, the now the footer of these text is actually aligned um, because of that text baseline alignment option. So that's really great. Some other, op some other things that I can probably highlight are and let me just go ahead and actually show you one other thing you probably you guys probably already know it so i'm going to go ahead and actually fill this container now imagine if you want to give um, if you want to go here and actually say that the spacing in between should be auto if you just have to do that you can just press option click here uh, and then say auto and that's going to do the same thing as you can see it's actually going to go ahead and give an auto spacing in between if you again want to go ahead and actually do a manual spacing you can do so but auto spacing is really easy as well in this new auto layout so that's really great again obviously we're missing some of the other options like the fill container the hug content uh, with a single click uh, but i've given you a solution for that which is like just uh, option and double clicking it and that's going to fill the container for these elements so that's great some other thing that i probably also want to mention is the idea or is the fact and i'm just going to go and uh, position certain elements like this so this is the first item in the auto layout uh, this is the second item and this is the third item i'm not sure if you guys remembered but previously in the auto layout the items were not flowing from top to bottom they were actually flowing in the op opposite direction so now everything's like organized how you would expect it to and how you see it in your design so the first item is at the top the second is in the middle and the third is at the end and now obviously if you press tab as well it flows in that top to bottom order which previously was not the case so that's really great um, some other things that i could probably highlight are the negative spacing so for the negative spacing i think it would be a much better option to just go ahead and actually create a design here so i'm just going to create a design in which negative spacings are very commonly used um, i'm going to go to unsplash and let's just go ahead and actually create a bunch of boxes here sorry not unsplash i actually wanted to go to content reel but let's just go ahead and actually do it afterwards so imagine you have these five boxes i'm going to press content command p and then go to the content reel plugin to actually apply some images here so now we have some images i'm going to apply all of these images to these boxes or circles now we have these images and I can actually give a negative spacing by going here and giving a negative spacing in between these items like this, or I can just press like shift or without even pressing shift, I can obviously just give a negative spacing. And as you can see, we have these overlapping elements that previously was not possible. You have to do, you used to do like a lot of magical stuff, like for example, giving the height of the frame of these containers a bit less and overlapping certain elements and stuff along those lines, but you don't have to do that right now. 
you can easily just go ahead and do something like this, which is pretty awesome. One other thing that they have also introduced is the fact that you can actually go ahead and say what the stacking is going to look like. So is the first one going to be behind or is the first one going to be at the top? I'm going to say the first one is going to be at the top. And as you can see, the first one is at the top or I can do the do it the other way around where the last one is at the top and it flows in that direction. So that's really great. Some other things that I'd probably want to highlight is let me just go ahead and actually grab an icon from here. So imagine we have a uh, maybe a bell icon. So let's just go ahead and actually grab a bell or a notification icon. So here we have a notification icon. I'm just going to go ahead and close this. Now imagine where we used to have like those buttons. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and actually give this a, an auto layout. So as you can see, this is an auto layout. I'm just going to go ahead and actually give it a light fill, a light blue fill, something like this. Give it a border radius by going here. The one other thing that they that Figma has actually introduced, which is pretty fascinating and exciting, is the fact that you can have absolutely position elements within an auto layout. So that's just ama amazing. Imagine you have a bunch of cards or maybe the cards example would have been much better here. Let me see if I have any cards here. Uh, I think I do. So here is an example of a card. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. I'm just going to go ahead and actually do it here so you guys can see it. So here we have this card. Now imagine if I actually wanted to introduce um, maybe a tag here. Previously, obviously right now, I'm just going to go ahead and actually type uh, hot. Maybe this is like a hot trending or let's probably say trending um, and say probably just give it, let's say a smaller text and give it a design of sort of a badge. Let's just go ahead and actually give this a color of red or something like this and change the background here. Now imagine previously if I wanted to give this somewhere here on the right, I would actually have to do a lot of magical stuff, probably have a frame and then give it some negative spacing and all of that stuff. Um, probably include this within a frame and then like just a lot of magical stuff and I basically had to break the auto layout. If I had to do it previously, I'm just going to show it so you can compare it. What I would do is I, I would basically give this a frame uh, and then now that I've given this a frame, I would basically drag this badge inside of this frame and now that I've dragged this inside I can position it like this but the problem with this is now the aspect ratio stuff that I've done in some of, some of my previous videos would not work because frames break the idea of auto layouts to begin with. Now if you want to position something absolutely you can just go ahead magically press this button absolute positioning and now this particular element can exist within the auto layout without necessarily messing with it. I can just go here and I can just position it obviously at the top and the right and then say that it's probably going to be situated somewhere like this. And there you have it. You have an absolutely positioned element which previously was not possible. And as you can see, since it is an auto layout, no matter how much I resize it, it's going to maintain that. One important thing, however, when you're posi or absolutely positioning elements, always make sure uh, where it currently is being placed and what the constraints are. If you actually have this element, let's say here, then as you can see on larger sizes, this trending badge is no, never gonna appear on the right. But if you actually place it on the right with these constraints, it's gonna work because even if let's say you resize this, which I'm gonna do right now, it's always gonna position itself on the top right. So that's really amazing with the new auto layout stuff. Let me just go ahead and quickly have a look if there's anything else I wanna mention. Yeah, so one thing that I would like to mention is the idea of strokes. So this isn't really that fascinating, but it can be useful in certain cases. Now imagine if I went ahead and actually, uh, I have this auto layout. I'm just gonna position this, just gonna increase its width. And let's say we have these, some icons inside of it. I'm also just gonna give an auto spacing in between. So you can see it, so auto, and then we have these items positioned here. Now previously, if there was some stroke included here, I'm just going to go ahead and include the strokes for these particular elements. I'm going to select all of these icons. I'm going to say the stroke needs to be, let's say, I don't know, 10 pixels. Um, and let's just go ahead and actually include it outside and make it slightly lighter so we can, so it's not so, so jarring. So imagine we have a stroke like this and yeah. Obviously, I just want to go ahead and like that to reduce the stroke a bit so it doesn't look so weird. 
So you have a stroke like this. Currently, as you can see, the padding is being is actually coming till the container of the element. It's not really considering the stroke. If you want to consider the stroke now in an auto layout, you can do that. You can click on it. You can define whether a stroke should be excluded from the layout, which, which it currently is, or it should be included. If I say included, as you can see, a slight change happened. And let me go ahead and actually increase the stroke now of let's say one particular element. I'm gonna make it 40, as you can see, even though the shape size is 40 and 40, the shape size is the same, but it's this stroke is actually changing the size of this auto layout. So now the auto layout is actually considering the stroke that's actually added on the element. And certain times when the stroke is actually part of the shape and you wanna keep it, um, this feature can be extremely useful. I think that's gonna be pretty much it. Um, I know that we have the idea of single-sided strokes, but that can be a separate thing as well. It's not necessarily included in an auto layout, but just for people who are interested, you can obviously now go ahead and actually have a single-sided stroke as well. I'm just gonna select all of them, and I'm gonna say that I wanna have uh, a stroke that's only that exists on only a specific size. I can say it's, it can only exist at the bottom, or I can, let's say, go ahead and do some custom stroking where I can define, okay, it should be the top and the bottom, or the top should be something like this, and the right should be something like this, and maybe the left should be, yeah, whatever. You get the idea. So I think that's pretty, pretty much what I have for this particular video. Um, I'm still gonna actually have a look at it one last time and see if there's anything that I missed but I don't think I have. Obviously you can go here to actually change um, the resizing of the auto layout, whether it should be hug contents, whether it should be fill container or fixed width, or it should be again the same for the height. But as I mentioned, I wouldn't necessarily prefer something like that. If I wanna make it fill, I'm just gonna go ahead and if I just showcase it here, if I wanna make something fill, I'm just gonna double click it like this on the edges. If I wanna fill the height, I'm gonna double click it like this. And yeah, if I wanna just go ahead and actually make it hug content again i'm going to do it like that because i just don't like going to drop downs and then switching and then using a particular option from there so i think that's going to be pretty much it do subscribe do hit the bell icon let me know if i actually missed something that you found really interesting in auto layouts and then we can have a look at it obviously you can click on this to get all of the sites and press command click to actually get all of the sites in a single uh, input box and using the commas that's going to be pretty much it. Take care. I'll see you later. Bye.